Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Dorman Lunch and Learn. My name is G. Trulia. We're here for GDI Fuel Systems How to Test and Clean Injectors. So, we're going to be using this launch GDI and regular injector cleaning and testing machine. As we're going through, we're going to look at these two injectors we have in here. We could put up to six in this unit. And we're going to show you how to clean it and different types of injectors like this BMW PZO injector. So we'll give you a closer view of that just in a little bit. Uh, oh, of course, my clicker just unclickified. So what we're going to cover, GDI, what is it? Primary fuel pump, well, you're all used to that. A primary fuel pump is what you've been dealing with for years on regular gasoline uh, fuel injection, right? Then we're going to talk about secondary injection pump. This is a little different. This is if you're used to working on a diesel, this is going to take the low pressure from the low pressure pump and make it high pressure. And using the launch combination fuel injector tester and cleaning machine. And then, of course, live launch fuel bench demonstration. And we got a couple of good tips from Dennis Rodenbacker out in Utah, who does a lot of this, and maybe Dennis is on, uh, or maybe he's not. But we'll talk about that as we go through. So here's the launch fuel bench that we'll be dealing with. Okay, real good unit, but GDI. So GDI has, on some units, this is an example off a, a Volkswagen Audi, and here it has a fuel control pump module. It has a low pressure pump. So this pump you could test with your fuel gauge or your fuel flow meter. You will see that later on because volume is important. If we don't get the proper volume up to the high pressure pump, which is right here, this is a high pressure pump, okay, then the computer can do everything it wants, but guess what? If the pump is no good or the cam is worn out, then these injectors can't push out from 600, in this case, to 2,900 pounds of pressure. Some newer ones are even higher than that. And again, never ever, for safety reasons, open a line up without checking for pressure drop. How do you check the pressure on the high side? There is no gauge for you to check it. What you're going to do is use your scan tool and you're going to depressurize the pump. First thing to do is disable the low pressure pump. Next thing is run the engine until the fuel runs out and then double check that pressure to make sure you're at a safe level, okay? So here, the fuel tank pressure module or low pressure fuel pump is a similar type of pump that we've been using for years, as I said. Testing is also the same. Remember that volume of fuel is so important. A lot of people just look at that pressure and that's not the way to go. So this is an example of GM Bosch GDI. Now, it varies a bit from model to year to car manufacturer, but basically the high pressure fuel uh, necessary for direct injection is supplied by a high pressure fuel pump. The pump is mounted on the rear of the engine and is driven by three cam lobes. Now, some use four, but in this case, three on bank two exhaust camshaft. This pump also regulates the fuel pressure using an actuator in the form of an internal solenoid control valve. In order to keep the engine running efficiently under all operating conditions, the PCM requests pressure ranges, and again, in this particular case, from 290 to 2176. So you've just seen the difference. The other one was 2900, 6 to 29. All depends, depending on the engine speed and load. Output drivers in the PCM provide pump control circuit with the 12 volts pulse modulated signal, which is regulates the fuel pressure by closing and opening the control valve at specific times during the pump strokes. This effectively regulates the portion of each pump stroke that is delivered to the fuel rail. When a control solenoid is not powered, the pump operates at the ma maximum flow rate. So in case of a problem, it's gonna do its maximum pressure. Okay, that way you can drive the vehicle, right? Otherwise, if we have very low pressure, you're trying to go fast, it ain't gonna work. In the event of a pump control failure, the high pressure pump is protected by a relief valve in the pump that prevents the pressure from exceeding 2538 in this case. So, 
What's the difference between these injectors, when I say these, GDI injectors, and regular gasoline fuel injection injectors? Okay, there's a big difference. When we look at a conventional injector system, we have 12 volts going to it, KOEO and KOER, key on engine off, key on engine running. When we start the vehicle up, the PCM supplies ground on one side so the injector can open up for a determined period of time called pulse width, and it's measured in milliseconds. Those milliseconds are a lot longer in duration from holding that injector open than in GDI, okay? So here, we're not using just 12 volts. We're using 65 volts. We use the boost transformer inside that controls positive and negative, both, okay? And I'll show you a uh, lab scope pattern in a little bit. So it controls each of it with 65 volts as a boost capacitor, as I said. Capacitor is discharged through the injector, allowing the initial injector opening. The injector then is held open by 12 volts. The fuel injector assembly is an electromagnetic injector. The injector has six precise machine holes that generate a cone-shaped oval spray pattern. The fuel injector has a slim extended tip in order to allow sufficient cooling in the cylinder head. So let's switch to this camera for a second here. Okay. Now I'm going to show you two different types of injectors. This is a non-PZO injector. Okay. Notice the way it looks. It works off 65 volts. It's off a Ford, all licensed through Bosch. And here is a BMW injector that is going to look a lot different. First of all, look at the top. And this launch unit comes with all different connectors. And you can see it's a PZO. You can see BMW. And it's going to have a number. This is going to be programmed in. Let me get that there a little better and do a, uh, a better focus here. And let's see if we can do a zoom in for you. You can see the BMW symbol. And you can see the numbers Okay, right there. And that is going to be important when you take any of these type injectors out. We'll, we'll reiterate that information in a little bit. You must be sure that, and that's in the cleaning machine of the launch, you must be sure that you put them in order. If you mix them up, the engine is not going to run well. Why? Because that injector is programmed per cylinder. How do you program it, you're probably thinking? Well, that's where your scan tool. On that BMW, we have ISTA, or you can use uh, AutoLogic in the, um, uh, the Opus IVS in their legacy software, or you could ask them to go through the actual factory tool. Sometimes you can do it in your favorite Snap-on or Launch in, in this case, or Autel or whoever. That would be up to you. And you can see that long tip. This long tip right here is, again, for cooling. So when replacing a high-pressure GDI fuel pump, the following must be observed. Using scan data and make sure the fuel pressure is down to a safe level. Again, that is super important. Make sure the bolts or nuts that are holding the pump in place are backed off evenly. If you back off two and you leave one, you may break the ear, okay? So the pump is usually three bolts, sometimes they're four bolts, but if you don't take them off evenly, the spring pressure for that high pressure pump that is working off the cam is gonna give you a problem. Now you could tap the motor around a little bit, but if you're on the low end and you have only little threads left and you come up to the high end, you may strip the bolts out or the hole out. So be careful doing that, okay? When installing a new a GDI pump, make sure the cam lobe is off the high part of the lobe. That means the round part is not the high part. Right here, this would be like a cam. I'll come in, right? You see how my knuckle is right here? Well, if you're on that high part, it's going to be hitting the pump right there, right? You want to be on the lower part, not on a high part, okay? High pressure stainless steel lines that are loosened must be replaced on certain vehicles to prevent fuel leaks. 
not on all of them, but someone like GM, they recommend it along with some other ones. Always check service information. And yes, you need to talk these lines. If you don't have a low inch pound torque wrench, okay, you're gonna need to get one. You're not gonna put your big one on for your wheels. You need to make sure you're gonna do that. Now here's the cam lobe I was talking about. So when you're on this high part right here, you're gonna have a harder time than if you're on the rounded part, okay? When removing the GDI injectors, carefully clean the manifold or engine bore with a soft brush to remove carbon buildup. But before you do that, you know, a lot of these injectors are very, very difficult to get out. What do I mean by that? Well, when you go back here and look at that extended tip that's in there, okay, when you're on that tip, it tends to stick in there and there's a lot of carbon, okay? So there is a special puller so you do not ruin that injector. Okay. So make sure you are equipped with all the right tools, right? So GDI fuel injection pulse width or on time is much lower than conventional fuel injectors. GDI on time at idle could be 0.4 milliseconds to less than two milliseconds compared to three to five milliseconds. So think about that, less than a half a millisecond on time. Why is that? Here's why, because of the high pressure fuel. GDI injectors have low resistance but you're kind of used to low resistance. Whoa. How many of you, drop my cup, how many of you actually, sorry about that, how many of you actually worked on TBI injectors? Well, probably a lot of you. And what was the resistance of that injector? About a half an ohm, okay? Low resistance equals what? High amperage. So you need higher amperage to open this injector. Why? You have to overcome higher fuel pressure. Now on the GDI ones, they just wanted the injector to open quickly. It wasn't because of high fuel pressure on the old throttle body injectors. Now if we have a question. Why 65 volts? Why 65 volts? So 65 volts to overcome the higher pressure so we can get more amperage out of it. If we didn't use, by the way, if we didn't use 65 volts, we would have to have higher amperage. The higher voltage lowers the amperage requirement, okay? It's something like they do even on a hybrid or electric vehicle. So the lower resistance, one ohm rather than about 14 ohms, and again, dependent on the system. And GDI used 65 volts due to a boost converter capacitors that takes 12 volts and boost it up to 65. So you got your normal 12 volt system. Does everyone understand that? It has to boost it up to that particular voltage level. Now, here's a copy off a screenshot that I took off a GDI uh, vehicle here. And this Canyon has fuel rail pressure. And if you notice, it is 513 and we are roughly at idle here, okay? The low pressure pump, if I can find it here, there we go. The low pressure, or the command, excuse me, the command of the pump is 67%, okay, on the fuel pressure high regulated control command. So that command changes as it sees a need, like more load. How are you going to tell more load? Well, it's going to go by the sensors on the vehicle. On this particular vehicle, it uses a mass airflow sensor with a built-in humidity sensor besides an intake air temperature sensor, and they do all the calculations so that way they can give the right fuel pressure. And of course, VSS, vehicle speed, and APP, accelerator pedal position, all come into play. Any questions there? Low 
Ah, what is an effective way of knowing if you're on the low end of the camp? Well, you got a one for your shot. <laughs> you know, if you start unbolting it a bit, you got to usually unbolt it. Um, or you could kind of figure out if it's on the exhaust cam where you are on a particular cylinder. I don't waste the time personally. What I do is I crack the bolts loose evenly. I see if there's a lot of pressure and I don't come up high. I come up where there's still a lot of thread in there and then I'll tap it a little bit. If you see that the pump drops a bit, you're in the right direction. It may be safer and always know if the motor is clockwise or counterclockwise to make sure you put a breaker bar on there and turn the crankshaft the right way. And doing that a little at a time is obviously going to be a better way than you tapping it with the key in case you over tap or the button nowadays. Any other questions? I'm assuming when checking the injector voltage, you should see a spike of 65 volts and then a level of 12 volts. Okay, so you're going to see a, a fuel injector pattern of GDI. And that question was, you assume you see the 65 volts. Well, you're going to see it and see where it goes. So yes, what's in dissipates it, the hold is going to be somewhere about 12. I'm going to show you voltage and amperage. Amperage is where it does work. So here, we can see here, this is on a, a Cadillac GDI. We start out, eh, I'm going to say roughly about 5, 600 PSI. We go up here to 1,400 PSI. And when we did that, you can see the throttle, the acceleration went up. There's the grams of air went up. There's the absolute throttle. You notice how they're all roughly at the same point. They're all about, you know, 80 something, 90 maybe, 80 something, 90, where you could see that reaction. You'd like to see that. Now, what I usually like is stacking them all together. This is the way that particular screenshot I took off a of snap on does it. Now, launch stacks them up, but you could also do launch in a whole bunch of little ones. So it all depends on your scan tool, right? Now, here, this is off the Ford. IDS. The Ford IDS is given us in toolbox, that's that right up there, we are doing a relative injector flow test. A relative injector flow test is basically checking what each injector could actually put out. When you look at this, you could see as Ford calls these things here ticks. If you're under the tick, it made it red. If you're above a tick, it's no good right? But we basically have a system here that is showing us very quickly, just connected to this, the uh, ALDL. Now, you wish every vehicle had this. You know, how can you do this otherwise? Well, there's different ways out there. But when injectors have an issue like this, is this injector clogged? Is there a coil problem? Is there an issue with a certain part of that injector. Well, when you go back to here, and if you notice right on here, there's a wire set up, right? And I could just move these wires apart and put an amp clamp there to see what the current flow would be going to that injector. I could also do it on this one back here. I just need to put a set of wires on it, right? And by the way, the wire connectors come with the launch unit. Comes with a bunch of connectors that I'll show you just in a bit. So here, right away, on my relative fuel flow, I can tell that I got a problem right here. I need to take care of that cylinder, see why that injector is not putting out the proper fuel. Is it a problem with a connection? Is it a problem with the driver? Well, that's where you're going to have to test, not guess. Do we have 65 volts going to it would be one of the first tests. What's the current drawer on it? Maybe the injector tip is just totally clogged up, or the injector is clogged. A lot of times on the tops of these, uh, let me see if I can get zoomed in here. There may be um, a good way for you to look at this here. Uh, it's too far down the hole. Let's see if I can clear that up there for you a bit. Well, down in there, there's a screen. Maybe it's easier on this other one. Take this one out. Yeah, 
You can sort of see the screen right in there. Okay. So there's a little screen, and a lot of these, when they're a fiber type of screen rather than a metal screen, you're going to run into an issue. We're going to talk about that just in a little bit. Okay. Screens always have to come out, but if that screen is clogged because debris got through, you'll want to check all the injectors. This is where this flow bench is really going to make a difference to see what's going on. Now, when we use it, you're going to see the difference between the two injectors that are in there. Again, you can do up to six at a time. GDI systems to see also if your pump is dropping. This is some good information here about where your fuel pressure is. Fuel pump on pressure, it tells you where you should be, okay? It measured 133, you gotta be between 50, 174. Fuel pump off between 45, 150, we got 76, that's okay, right? And 10 second gross leak, anything greater than 46 PSI is what they're looking for, we got 75. And 60 second leak down, it had got to be greater than 46 PSI, and we're at all of them. Now, here's after we fix that particular vehicle. You could see that injector, okay? And in this one, there was an internal issue with the injector. could not be cleaned. had to be replaced. But you could see the height difference between the rest of them, okay? You could see the milliseconds at 158. This one's the closest one to it. So to balance that engine out, you would want to take the rest of the injectors out, remove the screens, ultrasonically clean it, and then install new screens and flow test all of them. That way you know you got a pretty much balanced motor. Now on Ford GDI, you got that low pressure pump, got a high pressure pump, got a regulator, stainless steel fuel lines, okay, a fuel pressure sensor, like they all do, high pressure injectors that have six spray holes that spray at 16 micron level. So six spray holes, this is not a one injector. When we start spraying those, you're gonna see what they look like, okay? Then you got a PCM driver B plus, that is the positive side of 65 volts. You got the ground side, and this particular company, Ford, uses four can lobes, okay, for the high pressure pump and fuel pump rises from 65 pounds to 2,150 pounds on demand. So your basic pump, you're not going to have a problem with. Again, you test it the same way. Any questions here? Yeah, we're going to talk about the 65 volts when we get on the lab scope. So hang in there. So the fuel pump is primed on a Ford when the doors are unlocked or open via the dome light circuit. So basically, when you unlock it, they're going to put this pump on. Always depressurize the fuel system by removing the fuel pump relay or disconnecting the fuel pump and crank the engine over until the fuel pressure is drawn down to a safe level. The pressure can be monitored using the data pins, okay? So the data pins, real important. When installing a new high pressure pump, make sure it is in the uh, position correctly with the cam and slowly tighten it. You do not be, want to be on the high lobe of the cam. You want to be on the low part, right? High pressure pump has a cam roller plunger. Some have them, some don't. We're going to show you an example. An FVCV, fuel volume control valve, and DVCS, Ford loves acronyms, by the way, demand control valve solenoid pids. And the fuel injector uses about 65 volts. As on all GDIs, a special puller, seal remover, and seal installer must be used. And by the way, do not use any grease, silicone, oil, or anything. We'll talk about how you have to compress the seals. And you don't have a hell of a lot of time to get them in. So let's talk about the voltage level now. So here is the voltage level. I'll kind of blow it up. Let's look at voltage first here on the e-scope, okay? So what we have here, we start at zero, our voltage goes up, there we go, 65 volts. So when you look at that tip, we're at 65 volts, right? 
Go across, there's 60, there's 65. Notice when it comes down to zero, what are we pulsing out? We're pulse modulating right there, and that is going to be roughly about 12 or 14 volts. So that's the voltage level. Now, let me move up to the amperage level. And as the voltage goes, look at our amperage. Our amperage went from zero amps. We go across. We are roughly at eight amps. Now, if we didn't use the high voltage, that amperage would be higher. So there's another reason why I use high voltage, keep the current lower, okay? And you see how we modulate right here? So you are pulling roughly about, I'm gonna say about three amps right there pulsing. So about three amps is gonna keep it open. And this is how we measure the pulse width. From here, come on, from right here, oh, come on, from right here to here, or on amperage from here to there. That is the amount of time the injector is open to actually spray fuel in. The fuel pump, now look at the fuel pump. The fuel pump is pulse modulated, and if you look at it, this pump is only a 12 or 14 amp pump. You could see it, I'll blow it up for you right here. You could see it going up and down, right? Goes from ground, comes up, you got about 14 volts or so, and you pulse it. Look at the amperage, I'll move that up. The amperage goes up roughly right here, doesn't get to its highest level, probably about five, four and a half, five amps. We then get up to six at one point, and then we drop down, okay? So that pump is right there. There's your level at about four and a half, five amps. There's our little over six amps. And then we drop down again. Now to test the low pressure pump, if you don't own one of these flow testers, everyone wants a pressure. I got tons of pressure testers. You want flow and pressure. So here, my original old Vacutech one, you can see you have pressure. You can see you have pressure right here. It'll blow that up for you. But do we have good flow? And we do if we have over a half a gallon a minute, which we do, at 35 pounds of pressure on that particular car, that was good. So again, look at the little ball right there. See the little ball? That's a half a gallon. We're a little over 5 tenths of a gallon, and here's our pressure at about 38 PSI. Our next fuel tester here, you can see the gauge, but here, this is the MAC one, and we're roughly at about almost seven, okay, 0.7 of a gallon. So it's a little over half a gallon a minute. That is really good flow, and our pressure is 50 PSI. Now, a lot of people just go by pressure, but think about pressure as voltage is pressure. Voltage doesn't do work. Amperage is flow. Amperage does work. Same thing when it comes to fuel. So any questions on any of that right now? Uh, one question. Is the diode or capacitor utilized in the circuit to control induction when the injector is turned off? Well, it'd be a long, lengthy explanation. Is there a diode in there? It goes back and forth. Uh, we don't have the time to explain all that but you can look that up or email me and I can send you some information. All right, here, the low pressure side. Once you take it off, we always use a proper procedure. Make sure that it was all the way down. We take the fuel off. We now can connect our tester into the low side. Some GDI low pressure side fuel filters like this Audi Volkswagen, they actually have a pressure regulator. Now, when you put a new filter in, you take that clip out, and there's that regulator that gets reused, okay? So this is something that some people don't know. Now, most of the vehicles we're working with nowadays, the fuel filter is incorporated in a pump. It's a one-shot deal. Many vehicles, like Beamers, that have a bladder tank, anyway, you got to replace the whole thing anyway as a unit, not just the pump, the whole tank, okay? Now, the cam lobe setup. So here we had an Audi 
And this was the high side of the cam. And let me blow that up there for you a little more. This wore out. And by the way, please write down that Audi had been warranting these. They would give you a new head with new cam. You can see that thing is worn down. It's no real high spot on it. Okay. And when you look at the, this is a cam follower. Well, apparently this has a big hole in that cam follower. Not using the right oil, not really good oil changes could give you a problem. And they had problems with the metal they were using. This is why they warranted it for 120,000 miles. And I think they went out about 10 years on the model. But if you're over either one, they're not going to give it to you. Here's the new cam follower right here. And again, you know, if you have a problem with the camshaft, putting a new cam follower on is only going to wear out again. So it is not a cheap job to do if someone is at a warranty. Now, when you take injectors out, you want to inspect the injector. Okay. You want to see if there's a lot of buildup here. You got to be careful removing the seal. There's a special seal cutter. You want to make sure the ends are good here. You always want to put new seals on both ends of them. The fuel rail itself, you may want to clear, clean that out before you put it back. Make sure all injectors have the clips locking it in place. And when you get to this part of the injector where you have the seal on it, this is where you got to be careful installing it. GDIs can be very noisy. So what do they do? They use noise suppression. This noise suppression mat right here is going to keep the noise level down. If you take, like on this 3.6 motor here, if you take the intake off, make sure the matting is good. If the matting has deteriorated, make sure you get new ones so your customer doesn't complain, hey, this thing is super noisy. Okay? The fuel pump alone on some of these could be noisy, so never mind the injectors. Now, here's a great example of keeping everything in order. This is an older style BMW injector. You can see it has code numbers on it, just like the other one. You need to program those numbers into your scan tool. Notice we have them all capped. The reason why we have them capped, and we have them in order, one, two, three, four, five, six. The one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Very important, because if we mix them, we play one of these games, oh, I put that one there, when I go put it in the engine, you're going to have two cylinders not firing correctly. You would then need to code those injectors so the engine knows that injector is in that particular cylinder. So if you don't have the software, you don't have the right tools, you need to get them. And when we're under the vehicle, you can see here how we capped all the rails because you do not want any dirt or anything <clears throat> to get on this particular part here, the thread, because BMW uses, this is a BMW, and those were BMW injectors, uses a thread type one, okay? Different injectors for different companies. Now, the Teflon seals, you got to cut the seal off, and you can see carbon gets built up. Do try not to mark this here. The shaft, be careful with razor blades or whatever, you should get a seal cutting tool. Okay, and that way when you do that and you clean this up with some intake cleaner, wipe it off if you can. Don't start using, you know, any abrasive stuff on it to break it off because you can cause an issue like that. Okay, now here is the seal shrinkage, right? So you need to shrink the seal and this was number two you put on, then number three. The seal has to go down again. No grease, no Vaseline, no silicone, no nothing. It has to fit in, but you need to clean that bore out first. Here's a great tool from AGA Tools, which we use. It has the puller, okay? So when you need to take it out, it has the seal cutter right up top here. It has the little piece here that goes on the injector. That way you can slide the seal on. And by the way, these are two special crow feet that have angles on them because a lot of the BMWs, 
especially the V-motors, are too close. You can't get it off without moving the motor up, loosening the motor mount, big pain. These actually bend like my finger is bending, okay? So they are really good, AGA, great tools. And this, number one, not only you're not gonna cut your finger, but you're not gonna do any damage. You're gonna cut that seal off, one, two, three. That's the seal installer. And then you go with number two and number three. And within a five minute time frame, you need to make sure the bore is clean and get that GDI injector back into the correct cylinder, okay? Again, if it's PZO, those are the ones that got to be coated. If it's not PZO, it doesn't matter, but I would say always keep them in order. Okay. Here's some of the brushes we use. There's a lot of carbon buildup in these things, okay? But you can use these very soft brushes that remove the debris of where that injector is going to go in. The high-pressure fuel pump right here, well, we can tell that it's the high-pressure line because it's bolted down. And notice this one here has only two ears, okay, holding that pump down, some are three. This is the low pressure line, and there is the pressure regulator. And if you want to see the fuel pump reading that I took before on the lab scope, here's where you're going to connect your amp clamp and your voltage, right there. You're going to back probe it for voltage, and for the amp clamp, you'll put it around one of those two wires. Carbon buildup is a huge problem, huge problem. So if you don't have something like a good cleaning device, okay, you need a good cleaning system. Now, there's a lot out there that say to clean carbon up. We're not going to get into that. You can go check out our TST YouTube channel. We'll show you what we use. Um, the ATS uh, fuel stuff works really good breaking it down. But if something works for you, you stay whatever works for you. You got to keep that carbon level down. And a little note here, write down Volkswagen Audis. Misfires, especially when the engine is cold, is carbon related. All carbon related. Don't forget to check the breather system. Now, from Master Tech Injection, some GDI tips, courtesy of Dennis Ruddenbach. Bench testing many injectors look like they have a good spray pattern but many are 20 to 30% leaner and usually do not clean up and flow right. So that is something to think about, especially when you get a lot of carbon on it. A lot of injector filters are deteriorating and plugging off injectors. We talked about that, okay? If the piece gets down inside the injector from that screen, they will not back flush well enough to get the debris out. Filter deterioration in a pressurized cleaning system jams the filter pieces into the injector and damages them. Dennis is using stainless steel filters in all the injectors he's reconditioning. And that is an important thing to do. Now, in, we do other injectors. We had the old launch, uh, just regular injector machine. And we did a bunch of them, and I got a whole bunch of different filters from a company that sells them all. But stainless steel, this is a good tip because you won't have that problem. If uh, they break off the plastic locating tabs on the injector, so a locating tab is going to index where you have to put the injector in. So if you break off a particular tab, you could have a problem. You got to make sure they're in correctly. Um, since they have directional spray patterns, remember, these things are usually six tips. Carbon cleaning of the cylinder is becoming more needed service for injectors and they're getting so carbon up, it's taking numerous cycles in cleaning to get them back. And again, courtesy of Dennis Redenbeck of Master Tech Injection, there's his information there. So if you're not going to get a great machine like here, like this launch machine, we're going to do it live now, get onto the launch machine, and I'll explain some stuff here to you. Okay, first of all, for safety reasons, we're going to put glasses on, okay? So, safe unit, we tested it. We have a regulator that we put in, okay? Because with GDI, you want to use air pressure. They run it both ways, but we figured it is better to do the right thing and get the high pressure. You can put up to six injectors in here. I got two here in the cleaning. We'll talk about that. 
We'll show you now. We'll go on um, with this camera. And we'll show you the screen. Let me get in there a little closer here. And do a focus. Okay. And we'll do a little bit of a zoom here so you can get a little better... Okay, so you can see we're going to pick GDI. I'm going to hit enter. And you got a screen here that when you're on it, it's going to tell you here that's ultrasonic clean. We're going to pick that first. We also have here the uniformity uh, spray test. You have here the leak test. So when injectors leak, more carbon buildup. We have the injector test itself. And then we have the auto mode. Okay, and then if you go to the next screen, you got settings, you got system inquiry, and you got information. So if we went to settings, you see I have it uh, for the different parameters. First use, if you want to set it up. So we're going to go back and I have it set for air, but we're going to go to injector clean first. Now on injector clean, there is a little button. I can move this over here. There's a button right here. You got a little flush port that comes out. And by the way, it does have this neat cover that goes up top. We put in the cleaning solution. Okay. And we have our injectors in the basket. You put this on. You hit enter. You can see the different time frame. You know, I just have it down to two minutes. You know, because we're in a New York minute here, right? But it'll count it down, the injectors. You'll, you could hear them, I'm sure. And you could see that it is really giving it a, uh, a good shaking and baking there, right? So as this is doing that, you could see that the injector, if you take it out, the solution gets hot in there. And if I unplug this one, so you could so if I unplug this injector, you hear the other one still going? <coughs> but I'm going to plug this one back in. <coughs> Excuse me. And our time frame. And now what it's doing when I hit that button, not only you could hear the inject, it's pulsing these injectors. And it is getting the dirt out of them. This was a reddish color that now is getting darker. Before the fluid was visible, but you can see here in the back, it's getting dark looking. Why? Because it's starting to clean the injector up. Okay, these were carbon carboned up. Should have showed you before I tested them, but you got to make sure everything works. So you leave them in there a bit, and again, all seals are going to get replaced. Our countdown, it tells us how much time we have left over here. And for the sake of time, we're just going to exit out of that. And we're going to show you, so I'm going to shut that off. And let me move these wires off here so it's not in the way of the camera. Okay. And we are going to be looking. We're going to do this test here first. And it's called the uniformity spray test. So we're going to be looking at these two cylinders. These two right here with the injectors in them. 
I'm going to hit enter. Ooh. And we're going out a minute or so. And you can see this one here not spraying as good on one side. So now I can set the work pressure, which I did. And now it's going through to see we're going to measure out what's going on. So this is a great thing to have in your shop if it's in your shop budget. If not, you know, you can contact Dennis. He could uh, do injectors for you. But any type of head job we do on a vehicle or any fuel drivability, injectors would go through here so we could have a peace of mind that they are good and we don't have a fuel delivery problem. So once it's all done, we're going to look at the amount. And I'm going to show you the gauges here. In a second, we got air pressure that we regulated. And let me get this injector out of the way. So right here, we're just clicking it because it was getting the pressure out. But there's our air pressure being regulated in. They recommend the procedure. It also comes with a nifty box before we look at that. And this nifty box has obviously let me zoom out here. Comes with a manual, comes with the information here, and comes with a bag of all different injector type of connections, including like for this long injector, you're going to need these rods to put it up in the unit. Okay. But the other thing I wanted to show you so for that BMW injector, you're going to have a different type of setup that actually has to screw into the fuel injector. Of course, when you're looking for it, you can't find it. Here it is. So you see these tips here? They have the screw part that you could actually screw into. So that would go on the injector over here. And that way you can utilize the machine for that. So a very good, well thought out setup. Um, the only thing you got to do is source seals and stuff. And if you get one of these, um, I can tell you where to get that. I don't believe launch sells them, but maybe they do. So now let's take a look at our levels here. Since I'm a little blind, where is my light? Let me put my little light on here. And even though they have light in the background, just for camera work here, we could see that this one here is a bit lower than that. Okay, And this was on the first test, the uniformity test. Okay, So we're going to drain it. You can see it's going down, and all we did was hit the drain button. And any questions while we're waiting? Okay, so the next thing we're going to go over as soon as it gives us the finish complete, nice thing there's no guesswork with this unit. It actually tells you when it's done or complete. The red light is still on on the pad. Okay, when you hear that, so now we're going to go over and actually do the leak test. We're going to hit enter, enter to run. And again, if you look carefully at those spray patterns, let me see if I can get in more on that. Yeah, right now it's just, it's holding to see 
what the leak is actually doing and we'll just keep you focused in on these two right here. Got to find my hand here. Okay, so now it's looking to see if it has the drips. You know, as things get old, things tend to drip, right? So you want to make sure that your injectors are not dripping or leaking. And this unit does the whole thing for you. We got about 15 seconds left. If you've seen drips, that means something in that injector is not shutting off and we have an issue. We would need to take care of that. So right now, about five seconds. And of course, you know, launch products are sold all over. And now what we're doing is we're releasing pressure. Okay. And it tells you when it's complete. Okay. So release the pressure. It beeps. And now we're going to go and we're going to drain it. You can see the red light on there. We're in the drain mode. And when it tells you it's ready, you're going to hear the click and it's going to shut off. So how many of you out there actually have, I know some of my students, have injector cleaning machines? When I got the original launch injector machine, reasonably priced, there's other brands out there obviously, but for the regular shop that doesn't have a huge budget, it's a great machine. I had one time the little glass piece broke, okay, and that was just taking it apart. I was able to get new ones from launch without a problem. And they had all the pieces. The machine still works to this day. So it's a good unit. Now the next one here we're going to do is the injector test. Okay. So let's see the injector test here. You can see it's testing fuel. It's spraying a hell of a lot. The pressure on these gauges here. We're up over 8, 9 bar. Okay. And you can see what's going on in those cylinders. Now it says it's complete. And again, what do you want to do? You're going to want to measure that and see where you're at. And from... Now, right now, they look just about even. So one test, that's why sometimes different tests you have to run. Okay. Now, of course, you would ultrasonic. These have not been cleaned. Now I'm going to hit the drain button. It's going to go down in the cylinder. When it's done, it's going to tell us it's complete. And again, don't never take anything apart until it tells you the pressure has been released okay so it's still still doing some draining and it should pop off in a second all right clicked off that our last test is called auto mode auto mode is going to go through a whole bunch of different things here so we're going to hit enter and So let's see where auto mode actually brings us. So now it's doing a, uh, a pressure test there at about eight, nine bar. And now it's spraying fuel. And by the way, this is a special cleaner that goes in the machine. Does not come with the unit, but um, you can co contact your launch representative. If they can't get you that, I can tell you where I buy mine from. So right now, it says check the level, okay? So I'm going to check the level, get my trusty light because I'm blind. And there was a little bit of a difference, and now it went into fuel drain mode. And now that it's draining that out, It's going to look and tell us when it's done. So how many of you out there think that this would be 
helpful for you. It's doing, still doing part of a test right there. But how many of you out there think this would be a helpful tool for you? I know it's been great for our shop, is why I wanted to show you, give you some info on this Lunch and Learn about GDI and launch just coming out with this bench. And you can see, look at the difference in this particular spray pattern. This is called idle speed testing. So a very fine mist, but remember what we just went over before? We said the pressure does change, right? And when our pressure changes, that is a big difference from idle to when we're under load. So this thing here, going through the auto mode, you're covering all the bases. You can see how fine that mist is. Now the cylinders are filling up, but at a very, very low rate. So it's gonna change. It's gonna go into another mode soon. And I will take a sip of water and see if you got any other questions there as I am taking a sip. Hey, you know, while we're waiting and it's doing this, if you have any suggestions for any upcoming Lunch and Learns, we do one a month, please put them in there, or Doreen will put my email in there. You can email me at gt at attstraining.com. And uh, before I forget, uh, Dorman will have a live event in PA in September. Dates will be announced soon. It'll be a two-day class. There'll be management training from Vin Waterhouse. There'll be myself there. Kenny Zanders, and Pete Meyer. So you will see three of us. Oh, and we got some heavy duty stuff. We'll get Swede Own down there if you are interested in some heavy duty stuff. Uh, there'll be some live on vehicle. So maybe uh, if you're not good with a scope or something, you can bring it down and we'll show you. So still doing an idle speed test. I can't speed it up. It's the beauty about automatic stuff, right? But you get the idea. It should be switching over soon. And it's a good thing to see when you're on auto mode, if you have any leaks, always check for leaks first before putting anything together. Uh, again, I put a dryer in up here. Uh, yeah, you can see right up here. This is a dryer, so the regulator is gonna stay dry and no moisture is gonna get in your machine. That does not come with it. I bought that uh, separately. And you got some really nice gauges here, liquid free, uh, filled gauges. And while this is doing that, we'll give a plug, because it should be switching over soon. Give a plug to our upcoming TST. We have a TST round table, which is actually free for everyone. So anyone out there, you go to tstseminars.org. Doreen will type that in. Oh, oh, it's in your handout. No, nope, it's not in your handout. I didn't put the, the website there. So www.tstseminars.org. Uh, go there. We have a round table as you can talk about anything. There'll be myself and a few of the TST board members. Special guest, Gary Smith from Diagnation. We just had uh, one of the guys part of Diagnation, Craig Shippey, doing some really good stuff on Volkswagen Audi Otis, okay? So that was done there. We do stuff once a month. And then don't forget our TST big event. I believe we're on March the 18th. 2023, uh, this year being our 20th year, we will have a after party. So besides the hot breakfast, hot lunch, we're gonna have an after party with hot food. All our vendors and sponsors, people like Dorman products and launch and 
other companies that are out there, uh, Flow Dynamics, all these different companies that have been sponsoring us for years, um, ATS, Automotive Test Solutions, and many, many more. We'll be there, so as you're eating, you can schmooze with them, check stuff out, and uh, we'll take it from there. Let me see what this thing is still doing. We're still on auto idle speed mode. So I'm releasing the pressure, it would go more, but I do want to get you back from lunch, okay? So it would go through that complete test, and again, we'll just hit drain. And on that test, if I stop it for a second, you could see, and I should have showed you that before, that this one was higher than that one, okay? So that'd be a good thing for you to do some cleaning on. Um, I, I hope that this webinar um, was good for you, this Lunch and Learn. Hopefully you learned something, picked up some info, and we want you to enjoy your summer. We'll see you back in August if there's any questions. I still got like a half a minute because I'm not, I'm not playing with the, uh, the clock there. So any questions, we do want to thank you. On behalf of Dorman Products, I am G. Trulia. Have a great day. Be safe. Thank you.